Thank you for joining us for today's message. We believe we can go anywhere in the world from right here in Lamarck, Texas and reach people just like you. If you'd like more information about Abundant Life, please visit ALCC.org. You can also text the number below if you would like to support the church financially. Be ready for a powerful message that's gonna impact your life. To the book of Genesis chapter 19, and I'll just talk about this uh, probably more than I have time to read and speak about it because of our time this evening, which is, uh, uh, it's abbreviated a little bit because I understand people may be cooking turkey at the house and we certainly don't want the turkey to get up and walk off <laughs> or anything like that. So give me just a minute and I'll be finished when I'm through. All right. <laughs> That'll sink in too in just a minute. In the book of Genesis chapter 19, one of the unique stories of the Bible is the, it's probably one of the most phenomenal stories. There are a few of them that, uh, that are experiences that, that happened that God used, of course, to teach us some things. Uh, one of them that is uh, very unique, there was a man named Lot. Uh, he, Lot was Abraham's nephew. Everybody knows who Abraham was. Amen? Amen. He was the, uh, the Bible even calls him the father of our faith. And so he was a man who believed God uh, for righteousness to be imputed to him, the Bible says in the book of Romans. Uh, the Apostle Paul writes about Abraham, and he, he did that by believing God. And of course, uh, today, thank God, we have the Word of God, and we have the Holy Spirit now living in us, if Jesus is your Lord, and the righteousness of God is imparted to you when you say yes to Jesus Christ. Well, Lot was actually the nephew of Abraham. He was Lot's brother's uh, son. But uh, Lot, uh, but Abraham, it appears, kind of raised him and certainly took care of him like he was his own. And so there came a time when, uh, when in that journey that Abraham and, uh, had left a place called Ur of the Chaldee, and, and there he uh, begins to travel, and there comes a time when Lot and he separated. And they had a, they had a choice. Uh, I think their, their, their uh, flocks and herds and things were uh, kind of intermingling and they wanted to separate it out and Lot wanted his own place. So he gave him the choice. Abraham said, which way do you want to go? Well, uh, the Bible says he turned and he kind of looked toward these well-watered plains of memory. And there in that region, uh, there were these cities. One of them was called Sodom and the other was called Gomorrah. And he chose to go that direction because it just looked good. Lot chose to go that way. Abraham went another direction. And so Lot was a good man. He was a righteous man. And the apostle Peter says that, that uh, uh, in, the, in the book of 2 Peter, uh, it says that as Lot began to live in the city of Sodom, that after a while he vexed his righteous soul. Those are interesting words. Uh, it's, it's in the New Testament. It says that he vexed his soul. And the word vexed right there uh, is a, uh, it's a Greek word that uh, and I'm trying to get the right word so I don't get strung out on just a, a long diatribe about uh, what it means to be vexed. And, and can I just say he compromised his soul? That he, he literally, it comes from two or three words put together uh, in the Greek to make that one word. And it means that it, it came on top of him and pressed him down to the, like a heavy weight that was on him to the place uh, literally where he, it almost grounded him. And that's what that word means. It means to be pressed down, pressed down, almost all the way uh, to the ground. And King James will use the, uses the word vex. And it's a, a word we don't use that often today, of course, in English so much, but uh, still that's what it is. And it just says that uh, Lot was a good man, but he began to live in Sodom. And after a while, with his wife and his family and his two daughters, and after a while, it just began to weigh on him all of the sin and all of the uh, debauchery that was going on. Now listen, this is important. In the book of Luke chapter 17, in about verse, uh, I don't know, about verse 32 or so, uh, there's this uh, very short verse that Jesus talks about. And he spoke of it real powerful. He said, remember Lot's wife. For just three words, that's all that's in that verse. He said, remember Lot's wife. And he's talking about that, uh, that there is coming a day when the Lord is going to return. There's coming a day when the body of Christ will have to answer 
for how we live for the Lord in uh, the world, in the age, in the generation that we live in. And he says, remember Lot's wife. Uh, he talks about how there, uh, there was partying and there, were, uh, there was building going on and there was commerce and, and there were all of the things that were taking place. Jesus talks about it. Uh, just like we have today. Let's be honest, uh, the economy of the United States is in reality pretty good. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I don't see anybody in here missing meals. Thank you for your hearty support. Uh, unemployment just keeps going down. All of the, the blessings of the Lord are there. I know there's some problems, but I'm just saying that uh, God is good to us and some good things are happening. A whole lot of good things are happening. It could be a lot worse. Amen. Give me two amens right there. God has been good to us. Now listen. And so Jesus said that there will come a day like that, like it was in Noah's day. And then he keeps talking about it. And then he says, so uh, when those times begin to take place, do not go back into the world. Do not act like the world. Just because things seem to be recovering and, and seem to be going good. And I know there's issues. Don't, don't send me letters and emails because I'm not going to respond to them. I know as much as you know about it, but I'm just telling you right now, at the end of the day, we're better off than most nations on the face of the earth, even today. And so it's very important to understand that our heart should be thanking God and not looking back at anything. Well, the Bible says that Lot chose with his family to go and live in a, in a very nice looking place and it was called Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah. It's actually where we get the word sodomy from and sodomites and, and all of that. Well, at, uh, in, chapter, in chapter 18, the scripture says, there was so much sin, so much homosexuality, so much perversion, so much bestiality, uh, so much uh, all type of uh, adultery, all type of sin uh, was going on in that city that today that's even uh, where the word comes from, the English word comes from, that form of sin and that form of debauchery which the Bible calls an abomination to God. An abomination is a form of sinning that actually pushes you back out of the mercy of God and causes what the Bible says a judgment of some time to come, of some type to come. You better listen to that. There's more than one type of sin. Uh, we'll, we'll teach on that again later on, but in the scripture there were some things that were uh, called abominations and they would cause activity that was uh, very spiritual to come uh, from the heavenly realm into the natural realm that is not good. It gets quiet when I talk in this Methodist church like this. It's very necessary to understand. It's not an option. It's not just a life choice. It's not just a birth of some kind. No, no, no. It is a demon. It is a sin. And we are people that must understand that it will, that when it begins to move into a nation, into a culture, will vex that culture. It will vex that nation. The Bible says, of course, that uh, there are forms of sin that will weigh down people's souls so much that they begin to make false decisions. Uh, and so God said, I am going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, those two cities. He said, I'm going to destroy them. And uh, when he told that to Abraham. Abraham said, uh, God, something good. Can, uh, can I get 50 people? If I just found 50, you're a good God. If I found 50 in that city, that, uh, would you spare the city? And God said, all right, find 50 and I'll do it. And he said, well, then would you do 40? And God said, okay, I'll take 40. He said, well, how about 30? How many of y'all read this in your Bible? This in, in Genesis chapter 18. He said, okay. He said, well, how, how about 25? And he said, okay, well, how about 20? And finally, he said, how about 10 people? Just 10 people. And God said, all right, find me 10. And then chapter 19 starts. And in chapter 19, it appears that he couldn't find 10 righteous people in that city because they had been vexed, they had been weighed down with the sin of that nation and of that generation of that city. And it had literally permeated their life so much. Listen to me. And so God sent two angels 
This is in chapter 19. And the two angels, when they came in, they met Lot, and it says this, they met him in the gate of the city. The gate of the city was a place where those who were setting in rulership and judgment and those that could uh, pass out rulings and could uh, help uh, solve disputes and things like that. They uh, like the city council of that place or the mayor of that place. Let's use the mayor. You would understand it. He had some kind of power like that, like a judge. Actually, is what uh, the Bible goes on later in that chapter and says. And so he's gone from having a righteous soul who despised sin, thinking he could just live in that and not do anything about it, till now he has accepted it to such a degree that he is living, uh, and that he sets in the gate and he, and he deals with uh, disputes and does judgment and things like that with other leaders and elders in the city. This needs to get in your spirit right now. God does not play games with sin. God does not play games with sin. It's very important to get that in your spirit. And so the Bible says that two men who were angels, the Bible says, that were made to look like men. Two, these two men came and they said, uh, we want to uh, uh, come in because we're gonna, we have a word from God. And so uh, Lot said to them, well, well, come to my house with me, would you? Come to my house. And they said, well, we're supposed to go. And he said, no, come, come, come on to my house. Come to my house. And so the Bible says that he took those two angels uh, who were uh, obviously very brilliant looking. He took them to his house. And the men of the city saw these two angels. And the, the Bible says when they saw those two angels, uh, that the perversion the, the, the filthy perversion of, of perverse sexuality in them, the Bible says that they went to Lot's house. And these men said, and they were beating on the door, and they said, let those men come out that we saw come in there because we want to know them carnally. Now, I'm not sure how mature you are on a Wednesday night, before Thanksgiving, but do I have to explain what know them carnally means? They literally wanted to rape those men, those angels. And Lot, because he had vexed his soul instead of rising up like a man of God and doing something about it on his street where he lives, man, am I preaching good right now. Instead of declaring the truth, the scripture says, that Lot said, oh, no, no, don't, don't mess with those two men. It would be bad. And he said, I have two daughters that have never known a man. That's in your Bible. This is Abraham's nephew who's been trained in faith, Lot. He said, I, I have two daughters. This reminds me sometimes of, of, of some pastors and some churches today and some forms of Christianity that have no spiritual backbone whatsoever. And it doesn't make any difference what the sin is. It's okay. I don't know about you, but I thank God for salvation. I thank Him for forgiveness. I thank Him for mercy. I thank Him for grace. I do not compromise knowingly towards sin. Hallelujah. The Bible says that's why Jesus died for us. He was wounded for our sins, our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. And I don't care who you are, if Sodom and Gomorrah represents sin, then you can be sure everybody's got a little Sodom and Gomorrah in their life somewhere. That doesn't mean that we are to uh, try to uh, somehow grow that in our life. No, we are commanded in the name of Jesus to, be, to repent, to turn from that, and be delivered from all forms of known uh, uh, immorality or of sin on any level. If the Holy Spirit says it's sin, it's sin. And if the Word of God puts it in black and white in front of us, then we know it's sin. I'm preaching real good. Get this in your spirit. Get it in your spirit. So the scripture says, he offered his own daughters. He said, uh, these are virgins. They've never known a man. I'll give you my own daughter. And the, time out. Cindy and I raised three daughters. And, I, and I'm uh, so blessed to have wonderful spirit-filled son-in-laws. 
But I don't mind telling you, if somebody came beating on my door, wanting one of my daughters like that, oh, you'd have had to put me in the jail ministry real soon because that wasn't going to happen. I have, I don't know, I, I, I'm sure Lot was not from Texas because it sure wasn't going to happen in Texas. But Lot had so weakened down his resolve and compromised what he knew and believed that he literally offered his own daughters. And those two angels, the Bible says, those two men uh, reached outside and got Lot and yanked him inside and slammed the door. And the Bible says those two angels struck those men with blindness that were out there and they went totally blind. And even in their blindness, they're still oh, trying till they wear themselves out to break down the door. Can I just tell you that sin is never satisfied? I don't care if you're stone cold blind. If you're full of sin, sin is never satisfied. There's only one thing that changes that, and that's when we get before God with a humble heart and we say, God, uh, we give that to you, we repent, we turn from sin. The Bible says that uh, those men saved Lot and his two daughters and his wife and his son-in-laws. And then they said this to him. Listen, they said this to him. They said, you need to tell your family to get ready, it's a powerful type of the rapture of the church and the delivering power of God. It is a type. Uh, because before that judgment would come, God removed the only righteous people that were in there, the only followers of Jehovah God by faith that were in that city. That's what will take place one day in, in our lifetime possibly that before the great tribulation and before the judgment of God actually hits, I thank God on Thanksgiving that he will remove the righteous because he has not appointed his children to wrath. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. And, I, and I'm just about through with this because I can see I'm going to have to preach it to myself. I'm not getting enough hallelujahs out of anybody. Not enough amens. Listen to this. I tell you, God stirred my heart up about this. The church shut up. The body of Christ nationwide shut up. Uh, compromised with sin. And look what happened in our nation. Look where we are right now. No, if the body of Christ will rise up, humble theirself, call upon the Lord, God will heal our land. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. You got to get it in your spirit. Now listen to me. And so these angels said to him, get out of Dodge. He said, get out of Sodom. I don't care what it is. I call it get out of Dodge. I'm from Texas. And he said, here's what you have to do. You got to get your wife, get your daughters. Uh, if your son-in-laws will come, bring them with you, but get out of here because God is going to strike this place. And so that's what, that's what God said to him. Because sin always has a wage if it is unrepented and begins to be reveled in. And so the Bible says that uh, Lot talks to his two son-in-laws. And he says to his son-in-laws, would, uh, would you leave? I tell you, God's going to uh, do something. And the Bible says they thought that he was joking with them. That just tells me that Lot had lost that convicting anointing of God during that time that he was there because he had become so vexed he couldn't even talk to his own family about it. And the scripture says, and then he delayed. He began to just take his time. But time ran out. And because of the mercy, come on, somebody shout mercy. Because he had a praying uncle named Abraham who was praying for him, the Bible says the angel grabbed him by, one of them grabbed him by the hand, grabbed his wife by the hand, uh, the other one grabbed his daughters, uh, one of them each by the hand, and pulled them out of the town. Uh, I don't know about you, but prayer works. Listen, I, I can just tell you that it'll look like nearly hell is going to destroy something and if people look like they're just trying to miss God and trying to line their life up for hell, I'm talking about good people, God people. 
Because, uh, because their souls become vexed if you compromise with sin too long. And the scripture says, the angels literally drug them out of town. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I get to heaven, I don't want there to be these long uh, these skid marks right there where I, somebody had to drag me into heaven one day. I, I think I just want to uh, go into heaven rejoicing and thanking God for what he's done. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, then as they were leaving, the angel uh, of the Lord said to him, I want you to go up into the mountain there. Come on, I'm almost done. Y'all doing okay tonight? He, he said, I want to go up in the mountain. I want you to go up there. That's what the Lord says. And Abraham said, God, you're so full of grace to me. And you have so much mercy. Look what you've already done for us. I'll just go uh, to Zoar. I'll go to that little town over there that's in the plains. Well, God said, I'm going to destroy those cities. I'm going to destroy those cities of the plains. And, and, and he said, well, let me just go to that one there, to Zor. And so he said, well, you know, if that's what you're going to do, you're going to do it. And the Bible says that that's where Abraham went. He went to Zor. But it says, now look in verse 26, in, in uh, verse 26 of chapter 19, Genesis, it says, but Lot's wife turned from behind. She looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. She looked back. She looked back towards Sodom. And just a little, because that, that's always been kind of a confusing scripture to me, but I can just tell you that if you, uh, if you study it a little bit and read it in the, uh, in, in the original, in the Hebrew language there, it says she lagged far behind and as he began to enter into Zoar, she turned and looked back towards Sodom. It's almost like she was comparing that little city on the plain with what she knew about Sodom. And the, the scripture says, and then the fire, the brimstone of God began to hit that place. I don't, I don't have time to give you a history lesson on that particular area around the Dead Sea, but there's still all of that brimstone is still there today. I can tell you that. They still don't know where it came from. And, and so the scripture, I can tell you though, it's in the Bible, it's in Genesis 19. And, and the scripture says, as she turned to look back, uh, undoubtedly having lagged way behind him and he should have not allowed that to happen. He should have had his family serving God. And she began to desire what was behind her more than the direction that God had in front of her. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. And the Bible says that she turned into a, a, a pillar of salt. King James says it. Uh, which is probably about the most useless thing that can happen is just to have a big old uh, lump of salt. Oh my goodness. And then the Bible says that Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed and the other cities of the plain. And then Abraham, when he realized what had happened, he said, oh my goodness. And he went to the mountains where God told him to go. He got back on track and he started serving God. Can I just say that we are not people who are always looking back. Paul said, we press forward. I forget those things that are behind, but I reach forward and I press toward the mark for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now you say, pastor, why would you tell a story like you just told? Because it's in the Bible. And because Jesus, the head of the church, said, remember Lot's wife. We're not people who look back with this longing uh, for our yesterday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be looking back to, to old ways. If you used to be on drugs, don't you be looking back toward that drug. You rise up in the name of Jesus and rejoice that the sun set you free. You're free indeed. Press toward God's purpose in your life. Listen, if you're married and Jesus is your Lord, don't you be looking back toward old girlfriends and old boyfriends. I'm preaching so good right now. Man, I'm about to wear that part out. Y'all better shout. No, don't you be looking back toward all that stuff. I'm talking about don't be Facebooking. 
uh, with, with yesterday. I'm talking about all of the old uh, boyfriends, old girlfriends, old stuff that's not right. Amen. Don't be twittering. Oh, I'm preaching real good now. Forget the Instagram. Dear God, don't TikTok whatever you do. Go ahead and tear their number out of your phone book and get rid of it and quit dreaming about your precious memories. But let's press toward, press toward the plan that God has. Pr uh, press toward the blessing. Press toward the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. If there are areas in your life that are drawing you back, listen to pastor tonight as I get ready to close. Don't look back. Begin to bless the Lord and thank God that the Son has set you free. The mercy of God was upon you. It, it doesn't mean you were better than anybody else. You and I both know that there are a ton of people that used to do everything you did, uh, that were involved with many things that you were involved in, who ran in your circle, and they're not even here. They're, only, they're not even alive today, and it should have been you, but the mercy of God was upon you, and you're here today. You should understand God has a purpose and a purpose plan for today and tomorrow. Don't look back. Don't, don't begin to desire the things of yesterday. The mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Oh, hallelujah. When you begin to bless the Lord, you come into divine purpose. You come into the reason that you were born, you were created. Jesus died and went to Calvary to set us free from yesterday. He broke that bond that our original ancestor, Adam, uh, just clamped to every man's soul. He did that when he, when he fell. But when Jesus arose from the dead, he broke that bond, the Bible says. And when you say yes to Jesus, then what he did, he did it for you and you claim it and you become a new creation in Christ. All things pass away. Behold, everything becomes new in your life. Now, learn to live that new and living way. That way of victory, that way of joy, that way of salvation, that way of success in Christ. Learn how to be unshackled from the things of your yesterday. And God knows how to cause your life to walk in joy. Joy that is almost unexplainable, the Bible says. It doesn't say it's unexpressionable. It says it's joy that's unexplainable, but it's full of the glory of God. Come on, stand on your feet with me and hear this evening, church. Glory to God. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, in this hour of 2020, you've just come through nine months of attacks from the devil. Don't look back. Begin to magnify God and praise God for what he's done today. Don't desire the things of yesterday. Desire God's plan for right now. Lift your hands to the Lord with me, church. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Just worship for a moment. Worship. Come on, we just got a couple more minutes. Let's worship right now. God begin to speak and begin to talk through Lot and Lot begin to speak and he would say, no, 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 leave the angels alone. Don't do that. Don't do that. The Bible says those men of perversion rose up and said, this is that guy that came in from outside, a foreigner that came in and thinks he has to be our judge. 
That's what the fallen, that's what the perverted, that's what the sinners were saying. Listen, we're not judging anybody. What did God say? Every one of us, me, you, every person, our lives were, were drenched in sin. We were all outside of the kingdom of God until Jesus came in. And men said yes to Jesus Christ. Thank God somebody told me the truth one day. And I received it by faith. They showed it to me in passage after passage in the Bible, and it worked. And I believe tonight, don't allow that accusing spirit to try to draw you away from the prompting of the Holy Spirit to say yes to Jesus Christ and to be set free from yesterday and be delivered from whatever is trying to hold you back in this hour and you'll live for God, and you'll live victorious, and you'll, you'll become like Abraham in the Bible. Everywhere you put your foot by faith, you'll possess it for the kingdom of God. Church, would you just raise your hands with me tonight, and those of you that are viewing with us online, I'm gonna lead you in a prayer that says, Jesus be Lord. Pray this out with me. If you need this in your life, just say it to the Lord. Heavenly Father, I do believe Jesus sets me free from everything in my past and that which holds me back. I repent of all of my sin. Let your blood cleanse me. Jesus, let your divine blood by faith Wash me clean. Jesus, you're my Lord. I'll hearken to your word. I will refuse to be offended at the love of God that sets me free and informs me of how to live victorious. And from this night on, I will give God the praise with thanksgiving I will magnify the Lord for my new life in Christ Jesus by faith. Amen and amen. Come on, give God the praise tonight, church. To learn more, visit WalterHallam.net. Here you'll find a list of resources to help you with your daily walk in Christ.